I want to let you know that God sent me today to tell you that he wants to spend some time with you, okay? God wants to spend some time with you. I feel the presence of God here. He wants you to feel so secure in 2023. I know we got some students in here. He doesn't want you to be dismayed about anything. He wants you to feel the peace that surpasses all understanding. He wants you to feel the power of God in 2023 where you can go to your source every single time because when the world's going bonkers, you need something else to fill you up that's not just the world, okay? I remember as a kid, my dad had gone on his first business trip, okay? He had, he had gone on his first business trip. He was gone for a few days, and I missed him so bad. So I had this plan, and I was going to write, welcome home, dad, on the driveway in chalk, okay? So I go to my chalk drawer. I went to go get the chalk. No chalk, okay? If you've been around the Rosner house at all, you know that we have this phrase called use your R&I, okay? Okay? And R and I simply stands for using your resourcefulness and your initiative. I, you know, as I've grown older, I've really realized that this simply means figure it out, Lucas. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, Dad, the dishwasher is full. What do I do with my dish? R and I. Right. That means unload the dishwasher, Lucas. What are you doing? Figure it out. Okay. And man, did I figure it out. I went to my dad's toolbox and I got his construction glue and I wrote, welcome home, dad, all over the driveway, everybody. <laughs> Let's just say ruined all the clothes, the shoes, and the driveway, okay? Let's, let's just say I ruined the driveway too. But I really want us to get to a place where we're just desperate to be close to God. I want us to want to be close to God. Man, I just, God, I just haven't, I've been distant a little bit. I've been distant from his presence. My prayers aren't really producing the fruit that I've wanted to. I need his presence closer in this season, going into 2023, more than ever before. I just want to get us ready for this season. And the Lord brought me to this verse that's found in Hosea. You know I'm doing some research if I'm going to Hosea, okay? <laughs> So if, you're Bible, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to throw this on the screen. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. You can read along with me. And it says this, So for yourselves righteousness. Okay, well, wait. Doesn't God make us righteous? Well, yeah. Well, this is actually saying that you, there are some things that you can do to make yourselves a little bit more righteous. Reap a steadfast love. Break up your fallow ground. Lucas, what's fallow ground? This is a farming metaphor. This is a hard place. This ground doesn't grow anything. It's not, it, it, it has no moisture. This is a farming metaphor, right? For it is time to seek the Lord. Amen. That he may come and rain righteousness upon you. Not just righteousness in us, no, God will make things right. He will make things right in our families. He's going to make things right in our communities. He's going to make things right in our church. He's going to make things right in our city. Come on, I believe we need a revival in 2023 more than anything else. We need a revival. If you believe that, say amen. amen. All right. So here's this question. I'm going to ask us a few questions this morning. And the first one is this. How do we break up this hard ground? How do we break up this fallow ground? in our lives when it comes to prayer. I, like I said earlier, we're not, maybe we're feeling a little bit distant to God. We're not feeling his presence like we used to. So how are we gonna break up this fallow ground? And Jesus actually talks about this in Luke chapter eight. So I'm gonna be going there next. So if you have your Bibles, open up with me. And it says this, Luke chapter eight, verse five. It says, a farmer went out to sow his seed and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell along rocky ground and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell among this good soil and it came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than it was sown. It yielded a harvest, right? Not just a crop. It was visible, Maybe we're carrots, I don't know. You know, carrots are a little not as visible. <laughs> but I really believe today I'm gonna to talk about four heart conditions that are gonna break up this 
fallow ground when it comes to our prayer lives, okay? I'm gonna talk about these, and Jesus actually explains this whole metaphor of verses, right? We got crops, we got soil, we got seeds, we got thorns. What the heck does this have to do with my life? And Jesus explains this in verse 12, and the first one is found here, if you follow along with me. Verse 12, those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that, so that they may not believe and be saved. Takes away the words from their hearts. First one is this. If you're taking notes, it's the polluted heart. This is the one where the devil has gotten into, and I want all of us to ask this question to ourselves today, because I'm asking questions. I want us to ask this question, Lord, have I allowed anything in my heart? Have I allowed anything in my heart into my mind, into my actions, into my attitude that is polluting my heart. I want us to ask this question together. And I think this verse is so interesting because it says the devil comes and he takes away words from our hearts. Man, if you ever read your Bible, you know that words are so important. The Bible says that words are so important that life and death are in your tongue. The Bible also says that in the beginning, when the creator of the universe created the universe, that he spoke it into existence. Words are important, like you have value, you are beautiful, what you do matter, you have an impact. And I can't tell you how many times that I've had friends, that I've had peers, that I've had students in my life, that God has spoken to them a word for them, they felt the presence of God and they received something like you have value in your life and then, a and then a time of trial and tribulation comes to their life and the devil creeps in and starts planting seeds of doubt. Doubt creeps in and starts stealing some words and starts replacing some words like value. Check this out, ready? Man, I haven't added a whole lot of value to people before uh, in this season. Man, do I have some valuable people around me? Man, I, I, just, I guess I'm just not making an impact. Man, I have no value. You see what words are so important, and we gotta ask ourselves, man, have we allowed anything in to replace these words that God's have, God has given us? That's the polluted heart. Number two, Luke chapter eight, verse 13, those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no roots. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they actually fall away. It's not that I just don't love God. My mind has just been on other things. Come on, I think this can hit everybody, including myself. I got married. I had Thanksgiving. I had Christmas, and then I had New Year's. So this one hits a little bit home for me. It's not that we don't love God. Just God hasn't been on my mind. And I want to let you know today that whatever's on the throne of your life it actually ends up ruling your life, okay? The distracted heart. <laughs> then we get this really big distraction called football. We love football. Come on, somebody. But we need to get God back on the throne. We need to get God back on the throne of our lives. Number three, verse 14. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear but as they go on their way, they're choked out. Check this out. Not just by worries, not just by worries, no, by life's riches and pleasures. And they don't even mature as believers. And this isn't even a surprise. Number three is this, the immature heart. The immature heart. And this is the Lord, I'm fine. I love you. You're on the throne of my life. I'm not, feeling, I'm not feeling polluted. I'm not feeling really distracted. You've been on my mind, but I'm stagnant. Man, for some of us, we've been at the same place with God for a year, two years, five years, 10 years, whatever it is. God, you just haven't been the focus of my life. I've just been stagnant. I haven't felt the presence of God like I did when I went to that one conference, when I was at that one church, when I was in that one service. I just haven't felt the presence of God. But this year, I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna put God first in my life. 
I'm going to prioritize him at the beginning of my year, and I'm going to grow. Maybe, you know, as you put God first in your life, he's going to call you to maybe get involved in your church. He's going to challenge you because your relationship with God is not supposed to stay here, everybody. It is a never-ending incline. That's how your relationship with God works. So he's going to challenge you. Maybe it's to start a small group. Maybe it's to lead a small group. Maybe it's to join one. Maybe it's to get involved in the leadership of your church. But God challenges us, and that's how our relationship grows with him. Then finally, number four is found in verse 15. And it says this, But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. By hearing the word, they produce a crop. Their harvest is visible. The fruit of your life is visible to other people. The fruit of Jesus in your life is noticeable by people in your workspace. It's noticeable by people in your friend group. It's noticeable by your family that aren't Christian. It's noticeable. And number four is this. It's the prepared heart. And this is the one that we want as Christians. This is the one that produces a harvest in our lives. It's the one that produces fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, self-control, this is the heart that where when my friends and my family and when people around me are going through a hard time, I'm not on the sideline anymore. I come alongside them and I pick them up and I say, hey, we've been distracted. Let's get our eyes back on Jesus. This is the one where, hey, your, your heart's a little polluted. What have you been watching, bro? Hey, I love you, bro. Let's, hey, let's get our eyes back on Jesus. Hey, you, hey. We've been a little bit mature, bro. Keep your eyes back on Jesus for ourselves. This is the one that we want. When times of trouble start hitting our lives and doubt starts creeping in and trying to replace our words that we get from God and the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy our lives, I'm reminded, no, I do have value. God came down and he died for me and he actually said that when I, before I was even born that he had a plan for me that he knit me together in my mother's womb, that he chose me, that he had a purpose in my life, that I had purpose because I've hidden your word in my heart. You've hid, I've hidden my word. I've hidden your word in my heart. I'm prepared. Last question I want to ask. Actually, you know what? Maybe for some of us, we just need to be prepared for that person on 394. There's cuts us off. She's got to show the light of Jesus, baby. Jesus loves you. <laughs> that, one's, that one's for me right there. Amen. Last question. How do we get there? How do we get there? I think we can all identify with some of these heart postures in our lives. Man, some of us, we're just, we're just stuck in our prayer lives. Listen, God wants to spend some significant time with you. I want to let you know that's where your prayer source comes from. All right? And one word takes care of all of it, okay? And it's so offensive and it's so powerful all at the same time. And this is hilarious. But the word is repent, repentance, okay? This is not a turn or burn message at all. And I want you to hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. I need you to replace whatever that you've heard the word repentance, ever, you've heard anybody say about it, with this, okay? The literal meaning of repent is, Hebrew meaning, I was walking this way, I was going in this direction, and I turned, and now I'm going this way, okay? I was maybe going in this direction with my polluted heart, this way was leading me towards doubt in my life. This way was leading me to not keeping God on the throne and maybe some other things that maybe not, aren't even really important just took the throne of my life. 
and somehow I just got distant just by small steps. I just kept taking a small step away from God and now he's all the way over there. And we ask ourselves, man, I'm just not feeling God's presence anymore. What's going on? We're just going in the wrong direction. We just gotta repent. I told you, it's, it's an offensive and a powerful word, word all at the same time, but that's what it means. It just means I'm just turning. I've just been going the wrong direction with some of my actions. I've let things sneak in and replace words like what I'm doing matters. I added this verse at the end and I want all of us to read it together. It's not long. I think it'd be a great exercise for all of us, but it's found in Acts chapter three, verse 19. Okay, we'll have it on the screen. There it is. Let's read this together, okay? Here we go. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Man, that's what we need. We need a refreshing, amen? Man, we need a refreshing in our schools. We need a ref- I need a refreshing, Lord, what's in me that I need a refreshing, God. I need a refreshing in my heart. Man, some of you are tired already, and it's the eighth day of January. <laughs> Come on. Come on. We need a refreshing in our communities. We need a refreshing in our church. We just need a refreshing. Come on, would you guys just stand to your feet with me? We're just gonna spend a little bit of time in prayer because I believe we need a refreshing. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we worship you, we magnify you. Can we just open your hands like this in, in just an act of repentance and an act of surrender. Lord, I worship your name, God. You are the name above every other name in my life. I put you on the throne where you belong. God, you are my savior, but you are my Lord. You deserve lordship over everything in my life. You deserve lordship over my finances. You you deserve lordship over my families. God, you deserve lordship. You deserve lordship over my work, God. Jesus, I want to reap a harvest in 2023 like I never be have, God. God, I want this to be the season of spiritual growth. I want to grow more spiritually this year than I have ever before. God, I'm not staying here where my feet are, God. I'm not going to keep going in this direction, God. God, I want to have the prepared heart. God, there are people in my areas of influence that need to be picked up. There are people in my family that need to be picked up. There are people in my workspace that need to be prayed for. There are people in my life that need me to pick them up and tell them the life of Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah.